And I've got an art dealer now. No. I'm driving to Manhattan next week to look at some demon corns. What's a demon corn? Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our list of art pieces that fetched some serious dollars. No one needs to own a Van Gogh original. We do, in the Newport house. But it, it's small. Note, all figures are in US dollars and adjusted for inflation. Number 10, the standard bearer, Rembrandt, 1636. But Rembrandt looks behind the pose. And this is what makes his portraits touch us like nobody else's. Rembrandt's The Standard Bearer is an impressive piece today and has been regarded as such for much of its history. The self-portrait depicts the artist as a member of the Netherlands military, evoking the independence effort against Spain in the Eighty Years' War. The oil painting captures the subject in a lifelike appraisal that's approached from an almost straight-on view, giving the standard bearer an intimate feeling. At one time, the piece was owned by King George IV of England, a private sale from the Rothschild family to the Netherlands saw the standard bearer bring in a cool 175 million euros in the early 2020s. Which Rothschilds? Baba. <laughs> oh, is that funny? Number 9, La Femme d'Alger, version O, Pablo Picasso, 1955. Picasso once said, I never do a painting as a work of art. All of them are researches. I search constantly. It's an experiment in time. The art of Pablo Picasso has influenced generations of future artists in terms of style and approach. His series of 15 drawings and paintings titled Le Femme d'Alger, or Women of Algiers, has also proved to be financially lucrative. Fair enough, 159 million and 500 thousand dollars is bid. And selling to your client. Come a long way. In 2015, the final painting in the series, version O, was sold for $179.4 million in total to the ex-Prime Minister of Qatar, Hamad bin Jassim bin Jabbar Al Thani. The transaction took place at Christie's Auction House in New York, setting a record at the time for the most expensive piece to ever be sold at auction at that location. Valiant bidding, thank you so much. At $160 million, ladies and gentlemen, fair warning, Picasso Pam d'Alger, selling it here at Christie's, $160 million. Brett, it's yours, so. Number eight, pendant portraits of Martin Schulmans and Objin Kopit, Rembrandt, 1634. We can probably call this one of the most expensive wedding visual packages of all time. Rembrandt painted them full length and life size, a format which was normally reserved for the royalty and aristocracy in Europe. This pair of portraits was commissioned to celebrate the title subject's wedding. Although painted separately by Rembrandt, the works have always been kept and displayed together, adding another romantic layer to the historic pieces. Rembrandt painted these paintings in 1634, when he was only 28 years old. He just settled in in Amsterdam. Martin and Alpi were even younger. They were 22 and 23 years old when Rembrandt painted them. Pendant portraits of Martin Schulmans and Objin Kopit is another example of famous works of art that were owned by the Rothschilds. The Louvre Museum and the Rijksmuseum split the 160 million euro bill to buy the portraits in a sale finalised in 2016. The two museums agreed to keep the pair together and trade off where they would be on display. We've restored these paintings from October 2016 till March 2018. Number seven, number six, Violet, Green and Red, Mark Rothko, 1951. Abstract painter Mark Rothko was known for capturing engaging combinations of color. For Rothko, color can be used as a vehicle to convey the simplest and most powerful of human emotions. He was interested in how the colors and the forms interacted within the expanse of the canvas in order to provoke an optical experience for the viewer. In 1951, painting number six, Violet, Green and Red, is a compelling example of this sentiment. The high price tag for the piece is partially due to its involvement in the Bouvier affair of the mid 2010s. What have I done in 30 years of working in the art world? I learned to listen to the professionals and find out how things worked. A disingenuous art dealer and shipper by the name of Yves Bouvier was alleged to have defrauded clients by selling pieces, including number six, violet, green and red, at inflated prices. 
Bouvier sold the Rothko to Russian oligarch Dmitry Rybolovlev for 140 million euros, almost double what the dealer originally paid. Yves Bouvier's profits were colossal. But his attorney sweeps the accusations aside. He believes there was nothing illegal in his client's profits and that the Russian billionaire should have been shrewder. Number six, Water Serpents 2, Gustav Klimt. This provocative oil painting has a dramatic history, including a period of time when it was seized by Nazis during World War II. The Bouvier affair also led to a staggering sales figure when it was sold to Russian oligarch Dmitry Rybolovlev in 2013. The businessman purchased the Gustav Klimt painting for approximately $183.3 million. Art dealer Bouvier did not reveal to Rybolovlev that he was actually the seller. Having recently bought the piece and tacking around an extra $70 million onto the price tag. The Russian billionaire had filed charges against Yves Bouvier. He accused him of making exorbitant profits of a billion dollars at his own personal loss. Rybolovlev sold Water Serpents 2 a couple of years later, albeit at a loss to his original investment. Number 5. Number 17A, Jackson Pollock, 1948. Depending on who you ask, the art of Jackson Pollock is either the stuff of inspired, spontaneous brilliance or completely random splatter paint. Stop talking and look. You're not required to write a paper, you're not even required to like it. You are required. To consider it. A recognisable figure in the world of abstract expressionism, Pollock used his signature drip technique in many paintings he produced in the late 1940s. Number 17A is a chaotic blend of lines and colours that was featured in a Life magazine profile of Pollock in 1949. What good does your praise do me? Jackson, it's new stuff, you gotta give it time. We're broke! Fast forward to the year 2015, and number 17A would be purchased by hedge fund manager Kenneth C. Griffin for $200 million. That's not too shabby for some random splatter paint. You can't abstract from nothing. You can only abstract from life, from nature. I am nature. Number four, when will you marry? Paul Guggen, 1892. People will be known because you painted them and how you painted them, not because of who they are. There's a lot to unpack when it comes to the historical subtext of Paul Gauguin's When Will You Marry? The painting was created after a trip to Tahiti by the French artist didn't exactly go as planned. You went there in search of beauty and nature was definitely there and it was different than what you knew before and it made your paintings look different. Gauguin was hoping to capture what he deemed to be primitive Tahitian life. However, he found that the island's indigenous culture was different from his imagination due to colonization. Western clothes of the Tahitian girl in this 1891 portrait give an indication of this, as do Gauguin's many paintings of Christianity as practiced by the native population. When Will You Marry was more of a fantasy than a realistic portrait of Tahitian life, and it also wasn't considered a grand success upon completion. Its value had changed by the mid-2010s though, when it was sold to Sheikha Al Mayasa bint Hamad Al Thani of Qatar for almost $210 million. Number 3. The Card Players Paul Cezanne, 1892-93 This series of five paintings was completed as the French post-impressionist approached the end of his career. The first with five figures, the second with four. Before completing three further renderings, with just two players caught in tranquil contemplation. Cezanne used farm workers as models for the series, refining the works over several years. He maintained the subject's concentration on the game of cards throughout each piece while playing with complexity, space and symmetry. This isn't a rowdy tavern scene as one might expect from, for example, Dutch genre painting of similar subjects. Instead, Cezanne presents a monumental composition a composition which is about these figures locked in contemplation. Qatar's royal family purchased one piece from the series in 2011, paying a record-setting price at the time. Facilitated by the notable art collector George M. Birikos, the card players reportedly sold for around $250 million, although rumours swelled that they had paid even more. The card players remains a touching portrayal of people calmly considering the hand they've been dealt. Number two, Interchange, Willem de Kooning, 1955. 
The Dutch-American artist Willem de Kooning received $4,000 for the oil painting Interchange in 1955. Artists, they work to satisfy themselves rather than critics or patrons. The piece displays several points of transition from the abstract expressionist, including his choice of subject and technique. Although it fetched a fair chunk of change for the time, that sum is paltry compared to what it would cost Kenneth C. Griffin to acquire the piece in 2015. Ken, okay, I mean, one of the things I, I, I love about you is you put your money where your mouth is. The hedge fund manager shelled out $300 million to the David Geffen Foundation for the Art. Plus, Geffen had originally gotten interchange at a loss to its previous seller, thanks partially to a recession in the 1990s. You know, the world's always changing what's going to catch you off guard. Sure. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Salvatore Mondi, Leonardo da Vinci, 1499 to 1510. The beauty of that face is so compelling. This captivating image of Jesus Christ is attributed to Leonardo da Vinci, although scholars debate its origins and long history. In the 21st century, the piece went on a globe-hopping tour, shown in cities in Asia, Europe and the US, before being put up for auction at Christie's New York in 2017. At $370 million, ladies and gentlemen. 400 million! <laughs> The mystery around the painting did not stop it from selling for a record-setting $450.3 million to Prince Badr bin Abdullah Al Saud, a Saudi Arabian government figure. Following the sale, Salvador Mundi was moved around several times and placed in storage. Then plans were made to exhibit it in a newly constructed museum in 2024. It belongs at a museum with all the other Leonardos. Which price tag shocked you the most? Let us know in the comments. $400 million is the bid, and the piece is sold. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.